Yoga enlightens extends a very warm welcome to all the participants joined for the webinar on integral yoga therapy. The webinar focuses on integral yoga therapy which includes biomechanics and kinesiology of yoga asanas and therapeutic nutrition for prevention of diseases, promotion of health and treatment. Today we have three eminent personalities as resource persons as speakers. First of all, on behalf of Yoga Enlightens, I welcome Dr. Padmanabhan TV, consultant yoga and integral psychologist. He was initiated to yoga with Mantra Diksha and Karma Sanyasa by his guru Paramahamsa Swami Niranjanananda Saraswati of Biha School of Yoga, founder of Biha Yoga Bharati, the world's first yoga university of Paramahamsa Swami Satyananda Yoga tradition, Biha School of Yoga. He successfully completed a two-year full-time regular and residential post program on MA Yoga Psychology from Bihar Yoga Bharati Mukha. Besides postgraduate degrees in psychology, counseling and psychotherapy and PhD in yoga, he had been a university teacher in yoga in Kannur University and Central University of Kerala for the last 24 years. At present, he is a visiting yoga faculty and subject expert for Center for Yoga and Naturopathy, Mahatma Gandhi University, Kote. Resource person for UGC Human Resources Development Center, Kannur University. Resource person for State Council Educational Center and Training, Thiruvananthapuram, for preparing yoga handbook for classes 1 to 12 students of LKG, UKG, secondary and higher secondary schools of Kerala State. Five articles of papers published in international journals, 23 papers presented in UGC supported national seminars, four national webinars, seven workshops, four All India Radio Kannur and Trivandrum broadcasts, Radio Kerala Dubai or Qatar broadcast on 30 10 2022 on role of yoga and prevention of breast cancer 12 pm, and 12 thesis or dissertations guided. On behalf of Yoga Enlightens, I welcome Dr. Augustine George, Head of the Department of Physical Education, Government Medical College, Kotem, Kerala, India. Having an experience in teaching physical education for the last 22 years, he has successfully completed MSc Psychology from Madras University besides his physical education degrees. Published the following six books. UGC Net Examination Physical Education, 10 Years Solved Question Papers 2008 to 2020 Updated Education, Physical Health and Life Skill Education for Undergraduate Arts and Science Students of Colleges Affiliated with MG University, Kerala, Health and Fitness Education for Undergraduate Arts and Science Students of Colleges Affiliated with Kerala University, Kerala, Physical Activity and Health and Wellness, Physical Health and Life Skill Education, Physical and Health Education. He has done 17 research paper publications in national and international journals and 15 awards and honors. On behalf of Yoga Enlightens, I welcome Dr. Anita Moon, 
She is a clinical nutritionist and diet consultant and former state nutrition officer of Health Department, Government of Kerala. She is working as a nutrition expert with the Government of India Food Safety Screening Committee and various government-supported technical training management institutes. She was associated with UNICEF for implementation of nutrition programs in backward districts of Kerala. She has an extensive experience and strong interest in public health nutrition. She has over 200 publications in health magazines and three books in nutrition. Author of three books on nutrition published by Malayala Manorama, Basha Institute and Sujiri Publications. Her books, articles, documentary scripts, radio and television shows and health columns in health magazines have won her prestigious honors. She is a member of several committees and nutrition policy formulation team of Government of Kerala. Guest faculty in Institute of Management in Government, Indian Institute of Diabetes. She is a very active member of Nutrition Society of India and Indian Dietetic Association. Loka Samasta Sutinu Bhavantu. Okay, thank you very much. So let us yes. Vidya, it's okay. Yeah, Masha, thank you. Hmm? It's okay, Vidya. Okay, Masha. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for introducing the two eminent personalities, excluding me, because I am I myself is in front of you. So the purpose of introducing the eminent personality is nothing, but the classes are handled by very expert and competitive resource persons. <clears throat> it is very strictly speaking, it is an education program, a program that surrounds the all-round knowledge about yoga. Though the name is Integral Yoga Therapy, it touches each and every aspects of yoga. So after completion of the course, all the participants should have a better understanding about yoga, how to talk about the theory and the principles, as well as how to impart the practical aspects correctly using some scientific apply this word scientific principles biomechanics and kinesiology etc so that is why we have introduced three eminent personalities and besides we have one more eminent personality here and he is nothing uh, none other than uh, dr sandeep purushottaman and he is a ayurvedic physician and is expert in handling the applied yoga applied uh, Ayurvedic principles and methods and besides uh, the, our doctor is also a, a clinical yoga therapist. So altogether we have a good eminent personalities to handle all the classes. It means that I person not only handling the classes, we are all team and I, we, I, we hope that the team will definitely would help you to understand the concepts and the methods of yoga. Okay, fine. And uh, <clears throat> what the program, about the program, okay, about the program. So about the program, you know, it is a 200 hours program. So we have designed to conduct this program on all Saturdays and Sundays from eight to nine hours. And we hope that it should be convenient for all the participants. And on the next day, concurrently, we will conduct the practical classes. And the practical classes would help you to imbibe, to understand the concepts and the correct uh, doing of asanas and pranayama. All the day, the next morning, immediately after the theory classes, we will conduct the <coughs> yoga practical classes. So to talk about the uh, the other the next resource person, and he is Dr. Erstein George, and he is the head of the department of 
government medical college kottayam and he is very expert in handling the principles and methods of biomechanics and kinesiology and biomechanics is nothing but the positioning of the body i will show you some slides to you after this positioning of the body because the classical uh, text says only mentions only uh, gives some idea about us for example bhujangasana and bhujangasana it says that by pushing by pressing the hands or keeping the palms on the flow yes flow you have to raise your body upper body above the navel like a hooded cobra so this explanation is not sufficient so biomechanics will teach you how to position the body and where you have to keep the hands and what would be the distance the body a distance uh, between the two hands and whether it is a pro gravitational asana or an anti gravitational asana asana like that okay and he is a very committed person to talk about it the biomechanics and kinesiology and i say as our in the welcome address we already talked about uh, dr arida mohan he is an eminent in nutrition no doubt at all so we have invited her in mahatma gandhi college and she is very competent to teach you because nutrition is the day of the hour you know that the food is the main the food is the first life process the nutrition then comes the respiration so these are all life processes among the life process the nutrition is the first one if the nutrition is right everything is right so okay fine so these are the four uh, eminent personalities and besides we have one more eminent personalities dr shankar ram sir and he is an uh, allopathic doctor and experienced in sports medicine and nutrition so he also consented to be with us to deliver some classes for you so this is the something about the details of the faculties or the classes going to be handled to you so i will show you one or two three slides so you will get an idea what is the purpose of this therapy okay fine So I hope all can see the slide, no? Yes, yes, yes sir. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so this already I have talked about it. Yes, sir. sorry. One more uh, eminent personalities, and uh, the the teacher is a retired teacher. His name is Dr. Joseph Charles, and he is a trained anthropometric in the in the trained personality in anthro anthro anthropometric measure measurements. I will tell you what is anthropometric measurements. Okay. and uh, trained from the foreign universities so these are all the uh, details of our faculties okay and one more faculty dr shiju and he is a, a very expert psychologist in clinical counseling so he will be also joining with us and he will teach you the process of counseling because the process of counseling is, please please put your mic please 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 vidya please please mute the mic yes maashe okay so dr shichu and uh, he will be teaching you the process in counseling because her counseling is needed when you administer a, a yoga therapy so all together this yoga therapy encompasses the teachings the of very eminent personalities and you will get a good framework of what how the yoga therapy should be administered so that we will get the better best results so this uh, methods in yoga therapy you know it first is the cleansing therapy okay so it is concept of bahya sauja and antar sauja internal cleansing and external cleaning 
So they are done with the process of shat karma, etc. That we will be uh, communicating later on. And diet therapy is the nutrition. Okay, dietic simple in relationship with resa, the shat resas, guna, virya, vipaga. Okay, and uh, our Dr. Prishwath Minister will talk more about this. And uh, Dr. Anita Mohan, Madam, she also talks about more about the nutrition, modern nutrition. And we will compare all the nutrition, Ayurvedic nutrition, modern nutrition, and nutrition as explained in the uh, yogic text in uh, Garand Samhita. Then we will make an integral nutrition. Everything we are talking about integral. Okay, integral. Because integral is very good. A conventional process of anything that, that may not give the better results. So when we join everything, then it then we have a new method of new method of uh, teaching and process. So that is why we have used the word integral. Okay, integral. And the physical therapy and physical therapy, you know, physical therapy, they are administered through application of asanas. And mudras are here, the kaya mudras, the mudras with the body, not the hasta mudras and bandhas, etc. Okay. Then breathing, this one more thing is the breathing therapy that is through pranayama. And then mental therapy, you know, therapeutics of relaxation and visualiz visualization practices. There are many practices, radhaka, pranayama, yama, nayama, etc. And spiritual therapy, swadhyaya, satsanga, the good talks, bhakti yoga, karma yoga, and nana yoga, and their effects on spiritual resilience. So these are the methods we use. Then, and this, after that, uh, we will talk about the psychic physiology of yoga and therapeutic effects. Sharira Traya, the three bodies. This is yoga anatomy. Okay, then we will talk about the Panchakosha and how it is related with the disorders and diseases of the body. Then we will talk about the Trigona. Not Trigona and we will teach you the assessment of Trigona. There are two best standardized uh, tools, psychological tools by which you will be able to assess it. At the same time, the Tridosha also, when Dr. Sandeep Prishwatham sir will teach you, he will teach you how to assess the uh, Tridosha of people. Then you can compare both. So when we talk about Trigona, it is psychological. And when we talk about Tridosha, it is physiological. So then we'll talk about the Panchavayus and what they actually uh, do in the body. Okay. Then the 10 principles studies, actually, where are they? And uh, what, are, what is the methods for activating these three, 10 nadis we'll talk about. Then above all, we'll talk about demystification of Kundalini Yoga. A complete picture of uh, chakra meditation. Okay. And we, demystification here means, so there are many Indian god and goddesses are here. So, uh, Okay, those people who wanted to practice with the Indian God and Goddess, they can. But here, demystification, we use three techniques. Mandra, Tandra, and Yendra, and the Varna. These are all the four techniques we use. By which, this, are, this is a very, very deep inner psychic practices, chakra. Okay, we'll talk, I will talk about all the chakras. Muladhara, Swadhisthana. Manipura, Anagada, Vishuddhi, Ajna, Sakasvara, Padma, and how they are related with the Pancha, Mahabodhas, and why meditation, what happens? You know, what happens when you meditate? And when you meditate anywhere, either inside the body or outside the body, the psychology says that where attention goes, their energy flows. Where attention goes, their energy flows. When energy flows where the place you are, your attention is, then what happens? Something will happen there, the, the place where you are attending or concentrating. Okay, and that is true. So the <clears throat> chakra, though it is spiritual and very mystic, it has both physiological and physical benefits too. So we'll discuss about a complete picture about this Kundalini Yoga because anywhere, most of the places, the practice of Kundalini Yoga very much differs and people are mostly confused. So here there will be no confusion. And what, how, what are the 
psychological attributes of the varnas, the colors. The colors has an imminent effect upon our personalities. Okay, that depends upon person to person. Okay, then the next thing is some, uh, this one, yendras. Yendras, yendras are, uh, this is the, this one, triangle, circles, etc. Okay, mostly the trigonometric symbols, trigonometric symbols. And they are actually, uh, they are called archetypes. Okay, archetypes. In psychology, archetypes are actually, even though we never seen a circle, Okay, there is a circle in our archetypes, in our unconscious mind. So, uh, the great psychologist Carl Gustav said, Gustav said uh, when you focus your attention upon this such symbolic archetypes, the color is a symbolic archetype, okay, this entra is a symbolic archetype, then it is the best to practice for self-development. We need self-development. It is the psychological interpretation of uh, Kundalini Yoga or Chakra Dhyana. And it is a very good practice. So we will teach you a full course of Chakra Dhyana. We will teach you. Okay, fine. Then yoga therapy for disorders of the important human system. Most of the systems, digestive system, respiratory systems, endocrine and nervous systems, reproductive system, etc. All the system, it is not possible to complete within the 200 hours. But lifestyle disease, we definitely will talk. And what would be the def uh, nutrition for that each and every diseases? Because it is highly expensive uh, program, I think. Because suppose uh, when we talk about a disease, a respiratory disorder for asthma, then we will talk about the yoga practices. Then we will talk about what Ayurveda says. Then we will talk about what would be the nutrition. Okay. And what would be the calorie intake you have to take. So everything. Okay, then after that, we will teach you some assessments that I'll show you. Okay, then mental orders we talk about some stress management, how we can manage mental stress and how to assess stress. There are psychological tools that we will teach you how to assess stress, intensity of stress, how much degree of stress a person having, send generalized anxiety disorder. So how what, are, what is the tool for that assessment? And what would be the practices, integral practices? Then we talk about depression. Okay, depression is a common word altogether people are using nowadays. Then obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. So we'll talk about what is obsessive compulsive disorder and how to counsel, make a counseling and what would be the psychotherapeutic technique and as well as yoga therapeutic techniques. Then a post-traumatic disorder, because, because these are all uh, some of the most important uh, neurotic. This one, psychosis, we'll talk about uh, in surface level, talk about schizophrenia and perania, etc. So <clears throat> how this uh, biomechanics and kinesiology works, and Dr. Justin uh, George will talk uh, descriptively. So in Gerent Samhita, and what is the use of applying biomechanics and uh, uh, kinesiology you have to understand well so in garanta samhita talk talk uh, talks about uh, bhujangasana what it says angushta nabhi paryantham angushta nabhi paryantham angushta nabhi paryantham nabhi means the navel paryantham atho bhumo you have to keep flat on the bhumo cha vinyaseed Vinyasas means, yes, deploy. You have to keep the lower part of the body below the navel, flat on the floor. Dharam. Dharam. Karadala bhyam. Karadala means the palms. Okay. Drudurta shirsha means you have to raise your head. Fani vahi. Like a hooded cobra. Because that's all. No explanation. And uh, uh, according, based upon this it is not like that somebody has written a book and that is Bhujangasana, no. So based upon this great uh, verses mentioned by Maharshi Garanta in the Garanta Samhita text, many traditions, uh, they have given their own methods where to keep like that, like that, like that. But we have to see because and some traditions, you know, the method may be different and that method may not be tallying with the other traditions. So most of the people are very much confused about it. 
So what would be the right method? The biomechanics will teach you the right method. Definitely. And what is biomechanics? The absolute positioning of the body. How to position the body? Okay, the two palms to be yes. And, and where that tension comes and what are the muscles involved? That is kinesiology, movement of the muscles. He will talk about it. Dr. Sinjal will talk about it. Okay. And not only the movements of the muscles and the muscles are stressed. Okay. What happens? Flexibility increases. So in the muscles, you know, the nerves, the nerves, the nerves innervations are there. And what are the nerves? And the stressing of the muscles and the nerves, what they actually do in the body, psychologically, physiologically, and physically. And this would be the benefit. And when you learn in this way, and the people will accept you, yes, whatever the yoga therapy you are teaching the people, yes, he or she knows something about it. Okay. And we are also trying to publish a book. And with all your good participation at the end of this program and uh, with the ISBN number also. So here the meaning is let the lower part of the body from the toes up to the navel touch the ground, place the palms on the ground and where it is to be, it is not mentioned and raise the head like a serpent. And some people keep uh, just above the uh, shoulder and uh, the back to the shoulder and the shoulders are very much hunched, no. So the biomechanics will teach you, yes. And uh, this asana is a very great and same asana, Dr. Ravistan George will talk about the same asana today. So what is the purpose of understanding the principles of methods of biomechanics? That is why I have shown this uh, verses mentioned in the classical test. We should not forget the classical test because classical test is the base of this asana. So each and every yoga teacher and a yoga therapist must have a basic understanding and knowledge about the classical test. Then you go further applying the scientific principles. Okay, you see the just how it works. In the very beginning, you know, the child has a C-shaped thumb. And gradually what happens? The child comes in the prone position. Bhujangasana comes automatically. Now, now you see this. These are all the positions. This is the... One minute. Yes. Relaxation posture. And this, this type of Bhujangasana, most of the people may be doing. And this is the Bhujangasana. And the last one is the Purna Bhujangasana. And there is another variation. You see, the forearm must be flat on the floor. And this is therapeutic, actually. This one this is therapeutic. Okay, therapeutic. Forearm must be flat on the floor. And what would be the distance of between the two hands? The shoulder width apart. And okay, and this is spinix. Means even by keeping this forearm flat on the floor, you can teach an old page, old person to stretch the back back as far as possible. But this is not possible to them. And this is not possible to them. And this is the difference between the physical uh, activity of an asana and therapeutic activity of asana. I hope you understood. Okay? Yes. <clears throat> then the anthropometric I already talked about to you. So, sir will teach you uh, with the help of the goniometer eh? and uh, flexibility. And a simple flexibility is here actually. I, I, you, can, you can see this. One minute. You can see this. Yes, only, uh, only minimizing you can see this, I think. It is not possible. Yes. This is a simple method. You can, you can use it. So you need an anthropometric uh, measuring tap, not the uh, measuring tap used by the trailer. And what would be the flexibility, upper body flexibility? Okay. When flexibility increases, what happens? When flexibility increases, you will have a wide range of motion. You can do any activity. 
Okay, you can do any activity. Okay, so goniometer and that is used for measuring the hip hip flexibility and the elbow flexibility. So I will teach you. Okay, so it will be very much interesting. And we will be also teaching some functional fitness test for elderly. This is called geriatrics. So elderly people, suppose elderly people come to you. So what would be their functional fitness test? Functional fitness test means there is a set of functional fitness tests. So if the functional fitness test is okay, then you can teach them yoga. Otherwise, it is very, very difficult. So one of the functional physical, uh, functional physical test is called functional reaching test. Okay, functional reaching test means uh, you have to stand the client or the patient with the help of a wall by standing there itself. Okay, there itself within anatomical position, keeping the two feet shoulder width apart. You have to come forward. You have to come forward without moving the body. How far you can come forward? Okay, if it is less than five inches, you know, there is a, a sharp uh, possibility of falling immediately. Hmm? This test has many interpretations. You can see this. There are functional. So like this, she is standing there itself, and where it is reached, the middle car, car this one metacarpal, and this would be the measurement. We will teach you. <laughs> okay, then we will have a complete discourse of the Surya Yoga. Okay, the Surya Yoga. Surya Yoga is a, a text, a tantric text, which uh, talks about the Surya of the Prana, in which it said that even when the on the fifth day after the menstrual cycle. When the solar swara, the left swara of the man and the lunar swara of the woman is flowing and when they have the sexual intercourse, the text says they have, the sun here means a child, okay, will be conceived it. So uh, those who have this problem, you know, but you have, just you have to uh, tease them. Sometimes it may work. Sometimes it may work. So it is said by long back by Lord Shiva to his consort Parvati. Okay, anyhow, and after that concurrently there will be a yoga practice or so next morning. So this is something about the of certification. There will be a certification. Certification, uh, yoga and lights will give a certificate and besides yoga airline certification RYT 200 dollars will be issued. And for that you have to pay a small nominal fee. For more details you have to consult with the uh, Vidya and Sri Vidya, she is doing all these things. And besides Yoga Islands website registration, registration fee is something that you have to see the website, then you will get an RYT certificate. So you'll be eligible to teach yoga either in India or in foreign countries because some of the countries, you know, USA and UK, they are asking for the certificate. So this is something about this. Okay, fine. So here I am stopping. Now, uh, Sir, Augustine, sir. Yes, sir. I am here, sir. Yes, yes. So I cordially invite uh, my colleague, my friend, Dr. Augustine, sir, to talk about the concept of biomechanics and kinesiology. Okay, sir. Please welcome. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. So, most respected Dr. Padmanabhan TV, sir, Dr. Anita Mohan, Dr. Sandeep Purushottaman, sir and all others. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to present my views about biomechanical aspects of yoga and to be part of this course. I, I actually want to congratulate Padmanabhan sir for taking up this initiative by not keeping the information and knowledge within himself, but to spread the knowledge to the whole needy people out there. So I hope my audio is clear. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. So yeah, thank you. So I would like to just, I would like to share my screen and with the help of that, I will uh, present my session. I will take only 15 minutes.
I hope my screen is visible. No, sir. No, is sir. it visible now? No, no. Is it visible now? No, sir. One minute. Vidya? Yes, sir. Co-host. Uh, co-host. Co sir, you are co-host. Co-host. You can. Okay. So, but uh, what happened? Let me check. Screen. Share the screen. Yeah, I have shared the screen. Uh, you are co-host, sir. You can do. Yeah, but the screen is not visible, right? No. That is a large gallery speaker. Even my screen is not visible. No, it is not visible. I think is it? No, sir. Visible, Allah. Visible, Allah. Try making him a presenter and check. Right? <laughs> what about now? No, sir. It's not visible. I'll do it well. Actually, I am operating from my mobile. I used mm -hmm. to operate my mobile only. Okay, you talk about orally then, sir. Yeah. I will talk orally about this. Yes, please come so, to see. Yeah. So, uh, this biomechanics. So, what posture is? Posture is the attitude assumed by the body. So, your body. So, we say that what is a good posture? A good posture where the least strain is placed on your ligaments and joints. Okay. That is a good posture. So, when you move as a whole body, when you move your body, it should be, you know, the least strain is placed on the joints. That is a good posture. And in yoga, we say that stiram sukham asanam. That is in every asana, you should feel the comfort. You should not extend beyond that comfort. So by if you're doing bhujangasana, you're doing sarvangasana, whatever asana you're doing, you should feel the comfort. Up to that comfort level only you should do. That's why they say stiram Sukham Asana. So this, this is how the biomechanics helps you in this. So in uh, basically we have three categories of postures in yoga. That is the cultural asanas and which is done for physical fitness like Bhujangasana or Ushtrasana. These are all cultural asanas. And then we have relaxing, relaxing asanas which is, which, is, uh, which is usually done after every cultural asanas to uh, regain the body, the physiological state, to regain the normalcy of the physiological state. And then we have meditative asana for meditation. Okay. So why should we study biomechanics? So that is the question. Why we should study biomechanics? Padmanabhan Sara has already told you the importance and significance of biomechanics. So see what it is. So biomechanics is the study of the structure, function, and motion of the mechanical aspects of biological systems. So our biological system, you know, there are various forces which is acting on our body. Internal forces are there by our the pull and push of our muscles, by our skeletal bones, by our skeletons. So these internal forces and the external forces of the gravity, okay, these are the forces which acts on our body. So it is also the study of these forces. And the mechanical principles which is applied to the study of biological function is called biomechanics. Now you see, if you see your body, we have bones in our body. We have around 206 bones, 206 bones in our body. We have around 640 muscles in our body. Okay. And these muscles are attached to the bones through tendons. We call it as tendons. The structure is tendon. And then we have joints in our body. We have shoulder joint, we have hip joint, we have wrist joint, elbow joint. Okay. So in these joints, what happens? Two bones or three bones are connected to each other through ligaments. Ligaments. So ligaments are there. There are nerves. Okay. We supply, we supply which, which, are, which connects your muscles to the brain. And that is how you move your body. We call it as neuromuscular coordination. So these all things play equally important role in biomechanics of human body. 
so we have to understand this that we, you have to get the body awareness and biomechanics will help you to get the body awareness so that is biomechanics and knowledge of biomechanics is essential to perform postures correctly so you say that you do bhujangasan and you will get rid of this asthmatic problem but how can it be done effectively it will be effective only when the posture is correct so that is the thing which we have to keep attention on because this is something if you are doing it every day if i am doing yoga from the last 22 years so when i am doing it every day so see the effect which it is going to bring on me and if i am doing the asana in the wrong way just think of my whole body posture can change it can deform my body i can get postural deformities i can get any any illness or any disease condition just because of doing a faulty posture regularly for 22 years so that is why biomechanics is essential because it will tell you that how to perform the postures correctly and the poses that were most commonly identified as causing the injuries because injuries can happen that is in which postures the injuries will happen it the most common commonly identified postures which cause injuries are hyperflexion and hyper extension of spine so in bhujangasana it is a hyper extension of spine so when you extend the spine if it is hyper extension there can be an injury and in paschimottanasana where you bend your body forward it is a hyper flexion so if you go for hyper flexion there will be injury if your body is flexible then it's okay if it is not okay and if you are applying lot of pressure and uh, which goes against the principle of sthiram sukham asanam then you are going to invite injuries so that is the significance of biomechanics that you do the postures comfortably you reach to a level where there is comfort and you can do the postures in the correct form so that is the importance of biomechanics the importance of the significance of biomechanics lies there so i will tell with an example of bhujangasana uh, if the screen was there it would have been very helpful for you but now just uh, imagine bhujangasana sir has also already shown you the picture of bhujangasana just imagine the bhujangasana and you know you need to study the muscles which are involved in bhujangasana because then only you become scientific then only you will understand okay so the there are certain muscles which are involved in bhujangasana so as sir said up to the navel part the lower body part it touches the floor other thing sir yes sir is it come, come come to the screen you, you, you are not visible actually oh i am not visible okay uh, just a second sir uh, okay your visibility will get more idea about bhujangasana even though bhujangasana, bhujangasana is not coming okay if it is possible okay otherwise uh and uh, then okay sir continue then okay okay continue okay i i will continue like this okay, sir okay 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 just a second yeah so i was talking about that how the uh, how bhujangasana with the help of biomechanics when you do it help you to attain a stable and a very comfortable posture so in bhujangasana there are certain muscle groups like you have heard of serratus anterior triceps brachii gluteus maximus hamstrings so these muscles are involved so what is this hamstring muscles before going to the muscle let me tell you about the skeletons the bones which are involved the spine is involved the upper limbs that is that is uh, your both the legs so that is involved so what happens in the spine movement it is extension extension that is the spine is arched backward that is extension so you have to learn the 
uh, these technical terms. What is flexion? What is extension? Flexion is when you bow down, it's flexion. When you arch back, it's extension. Okay, upper limbs, elbow extension. Elbow extension means when you when you straighten your elbow, it is elbow extension. When you fold your elbow, it is you know flexion, flexion of elbow. So in Bhujangasana, there is elbow extension, and the lower limbs, hip extension. That is, you are extending your hip, you are arching your hip, and adduction of the hip is there. That is very important. In many people, those who do yoga, those who do Bhujangasana, their hips are open. But that is wrong way of doing it. That it should be close. Your both legs should be close. And there is a tendency when you arch your body back, your legs get separated. So you have to keep your legs together. That is known as adduction. When your legs are apart, we call it as abduction. A B. And when your legs are close, it is called adduction. A D D. U C T I O N. Then knee extension is there. Then ankle plantar flexion. Plantar flexion means you have to extend your ankles, and you have to touch. You know your ankles should touch the floor. So that is plantar flexion. So that is the that is how you have to keep your joints. And then mus muscular contractions. You know you, certain muscles because when the muscles contract, your body moves. So which all muscles you have to contract so that while doing Bhujangasana. Your breathing is not affected. That is again, that is the importance of you know the comfort level. It brings the comfort level. So many people when they do bhujangasana, they stop breathing, but that is wrong. You should not stop breathing. You should have a very clear breath flow. So you should be able to inhale and exhale comfortably. So when you do with the biomechanical principle, you will be able to inhale and exhale the breath. So that is the beauty of it. That is the you know that is the crux part of doing the asana. That is your breathing. Your lungs are open. So here, what you do? How you can keep your lungs open? Like here, the spinal extensor muscle. These are the muscles which run parallel to your spinal column on both the sides of your spinal column. So these spinal extensors they contract. The contraction is concentric contraction. Now, what is concentric contraction? Concentric contraction is where your muscle shortens when you contract. That is concentric contraction. So, with the concentric contraction, you are you you arch back, and when you arch back, your spinal muscles are contracting. So that muscles you have to contract, and then there is another muscle group known as serratus posterior superior. This muscle also has to be contracted. Why? To elevate the ribs. to raise your ribs so when you raise your ribs you are able to inhale more efficiently so that is the idea behind it so when you contract the serratus posterior superior muscle you are elevating your ribs and this exactly happens when you inhale breathe you are elevating your ribs the serratus posterior superior muscle is activated so the same muscle you have to activate Then the serratus anterior to stabilize scapula on the rib cage. What is scapula? Scapula. Scapula is behind your shoulders. There are two triangular shaped bones. These are known as scapulas. And to stabilize this scapula on your rib cage, the serratus anterior muscle has to be contracted. Then the rotator cuff muscles are the shoulder muscles, you know. And these muscles are also need to be concentrated, contracted. to stabilize your shoulder joint your shoulder joint is stabilized then you have to contract the hamstring and adductor magnus these are another two group of muscles hamstring is at the back of located at the back of your thigh and the adductor magnus at the medial side of your thigh and these muscles have to be contracted so that your both the legs are together that is they are in the adducted form and it is internally rotated internally rotated uh, later on i will show you what is internal rotation what is external rotation because when you do according to these principles you know your body you will be doing asana in the perfect form and when you do asanas in the perfect form then only you will gain benefits out of it otherwise wrong posture when it is repeated again and again it will only invite injuries and you will not get the benefits out of it Maybe. and at the same time in bhujangasana there is eccentric contraction also eccentric 
eccentric contraction is when the muscle lengthens but at the same time the pressure is there on the muscle that is eccentric contraction so which muscles are eccentrically contracted here the psoas minor and abdominal muscles the abdominal muscles just think of abdominal muscles you all know the six packs the abdominal muscles and these muscles you are arching back these muscles are stretched these muscles are stressed but again when they are stretched they are contracted the eccentric contraction is there why why it is contracted so that over the over mobilization of lumbar spine can be avoided lumbar spine is the lower spine part so if there is over mobilization if there is hyper extension then that may cause injury in your spine so for that to prevent that you have to contract your abdominal muscles too so when we do bhujangasan when a layman do bhujangasan what he does with the help of his hands he just move backward he is not concerned about contracting his hip muscles about keeping his legs together in the adduction form or contracting his abdominal muscles in the eccentric form he is not concerned about it so and that may lead to do the asana in the wrong way and not to gain the maximum benefit out of the asana yes so uh, i will stop here because i don't want to take much time because dr okay. anita madam is also there so okay. uh, thank you very much and um, for giving the opportunity i hope i have made myself clear and the slide actually didn't work slide was working for me but then it was not showing up so uh, we will rectify that okay mm -hmm. so thank you very much okay. okay okay sir okay sir okay okay sir sir well, thank you very much so don't worry all the participants who are going to join our integral yoga therapy and sir is dealing the classes then definitely the ppt will work okay yeah, yeah. yeah thank you the muscles he talks about you see he talked about a very important things there are some contraction some extensions etc okay and stretching and that should happens very systematically otherwise you are doing wrong so when you apply the principles of biomechanics and kinesiology is the movement of the muscles he talked about it then you will be able to you can do correctly and you can teach correctly to others then there will be no confusions when you know the principle of biomechanics and kinesiology then there will be no confusions and if you do not know this then may be confusion after confusions okay thank you very much sir thank you very much so i invite dr sandeep prashothaman sir please prashothaman sir sandeep sir okay okay yeah oh, sir please okay. please come to the screen sir and he is an ayurvedic physician and he will talk about the integral uh, nutrition in the ayurveda and uh, this uh, uh, applied principles of ayurveda etc please sir okay come in, come in. okay good evening to all and uh, thank you patmanabhan sir uh, for giving this opportunity among uh, colossus of uh, yoga is it is it audible sir can you hear yes me? sir yes sir yes sir okay 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 fine so i am basically an ayurvedic doctor uh, from kotakal and i came to yoga by by chance in fact i have had a near fatal accident and it was complicated by developing tetanus adult tetanus which is like say 80% to 90% fatal so i was the fortunate 20 person who survived but after surviving the tetanus i was able to recover fully by virtue of yoga only because i was uh, uh, i came to yoga just to do something for myself so i have a belief that okay if it can cure myself definitely i can cure others so that, that's how i came to this so what i want what are, we are doing here along with patanabhan sir we were colleagues at the green side whether in mahe so we were doing clinical yoga and mostly we were uh, teaching uh, europeans so one question they used to ask us that whether the benefits of physical benefits mostly of course the mental also whether these are written in our classical text so that was one thing which Uh, we cannot uh, explain only through yogic books but actually the help comes from or we can explain it better if we know the basic principles of uh, ayurveda also 
so basically ayurveda is also has a philosophical beginning so you know herbs are the everywhere in the world whether it is in in indonesian forest whether in the amazonia uh, in mexico african countries everywhere there was some know how about uh, the herbs but what makes indian system or ayurveda unique is that we we know b- before the concept of uh, uh, the sankhya philosophy we were able to encompass the properties of medicines or herbs into yoga philosophy this these two philosophies yoga and sankhya philosophies go hand in hand in certain aspects and if you can correlate between these two you can explain what we call the present day clinical yoga better so among that you know or you might have everybody might have heard about panjabhutas and uh, tridoshas actually everything comes from philosophy and uh, if we we try to relate uh, doshas in ayurveda to yoga also mainly the vata properties you know why everybody knows what vata is so but among the common man there is a concept that vata is a disease or pitta is a disease or kapha are diseases but on the other hand in simple terms vata pitta and kapha are the physiology of ayurveda so you know vata is nothing but something in movement in physiological terms we can say that it is the, the nervous system and the coordination between the nervous system and the muscular system and even our cognition these things the second part the pitta pitta basically comes from fire so fire doesn't mean that boil only the word meaning of uh, pitta in malayalam is uh, boil but it it has a wider meaning like that uh, it includes all the metabolic activities including the enzymatic activities and uh, the hormonal activities taking place in our body even the 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 physiology of vision can be explained by the pitta and coming to the kapha kapha is the all the anabolic or nutritional properties of a human being so th- these are the basics of basics of uh, ayurveda according to the the, the physiology of yoga uh, ayurveda so now coming to the the, the disease part most of the i will i will cite one example related with the apana apana is one among the vatas you, you might know it apana is the vata that is uh, responsible for our uh, excretory processes reproductive processes and it is particularly important for women because uh, it explains everything including concept conceiving carrying the baby as well as uh, delivering the baby so in our present day what we find that many of the diseases uh, job related diseases they come to us saying that they have a urinary tract infection uh, gynecological related uh, diseases then also co- simple constipation constipation leading to piles and other anorectal diseases but we are able to rectify this by concentrating on what we call the apana when we make the channels or the uh, channels of apana free of movement we are able to rectify this so in such cases we describe uh, or we prescribe uh, asanas which will stimulate the lower part of the body uh, where the activities of apana is maximum so this is how we uh, try to deal with the diseases and uh, i'm sorry that uh, i've been given as only a short notice so i don't have any slides i would have been able to do it in a on a and a better better way if i have time so hopefully uh, we will i uh, will come up with a, 
a, a better skill slides and all because i am talking from the uh, mobile phone now so next time uh, i'll go into details with slides and all so hope then we will be able to do in a better way before concluding i would say that in ayurveda uh, they treat with three principles like aushadha ahara and vihara so removing the aushadhas the other two vihara and uh, ahara they go hand in hand with the yoga also and uh, la lastly but not the least uh, sometimes there is a divergence between the, there are uh, clashes of ideas between yoga and ayurveda so they diverge totally diverge one example is that uh, in ayurveda there are uh, 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 there is a branch called vajigarana where uh, sexual activities are are the main thing i mean it is the science or it is the branch of ayurveda that uh, helps to increase the libido of a person or reproductive aspect so in certain areas they are diverging as well the same with the, uh, uh, some medicines like arishtas which contain alcohol and nar- narcotics are also a part of ayurveda so sometimes i feel uh, drawn between these two with which one is the right one whether ayurvedic or the yoga but having said that uh, in other countries especially in european countries uh, even ayurveda is flying on the wings of yoga so once again thank you for giving me this opportunity we hopefully we will definitely we will meet again with a, a longer version a longer classes thank you sir and thank you all the the, the colleagues who are the for the informative classes i am also uh, hearing it keenly okay thank you thank you sir. thank you thank you thank you dr sandeep prashotham and sir thank you very much for your informative and meaningful talk in the short span of period of time so uh, anyhow we have a module applied yoga applied uh, ayurveda in which uh, uh, we will send the module to you sir so then you can prepare your slides and teach them and as you said in the last thing because there is a controversy among these two and that is why we have used to the word integral okay the integral approach so uh, we have just uh, received a message from dr anita morgan and she is traveling so this uh, internet is not so good so anyhow uh, in the sessions we are we are we will start from 14th january onwards uh she will definitely she will teach you the modern nutrition and the concepts and the calorie etc so that you can make a diet chart integral diet chart with aharam as i used to say different many many times that vidaharam vinayastu yoga rambam tu karaye nana rogo bhavet tasya kinchit yogo na sidhyati the food is the first life process so ayurveda comes there yoga comes there and modern nutrition comes there and both these three and what is the integral approach the word mitahara has very much importance balance right so we will be talking about all these things so interaction we are going to conclude this session and before that any significant question anybody wants to ask me please ask we should be very significant and uh, informative and meaningful to all <clears throat> because there was a starting problem so the a webinar started little late so now the time is going to be 9:30 this is the only problem with the internet because it, the internet is not in our hands sometimes it slips away so any significant question so all the chapters we will cover or whatever the 
modules we have shown in the brochure. I will talk each and every one one by one. Okay, you will get the complete information about it, whether it is an asana or a pranayama. Okay, and uh, we will teach, uh, I will teach you the Shiva Sarodaya, the Tantric text, by, from which you will get many, many, many idea, ideas. Even you can put some of the concept as a research studies. Okay, so that is why I, I told you that it is an academic, actually it is an educational series. So any, anybody, anybody has any doubt? And some of them are the YouTube also. So it doesn't matter. And who's ever present in this? Anybody? Waiting for classes, sir. <laughs> yeah. ah, classes will start soon. 14th only will start. Okay. So next day, the, the practical will be there. So any doubt regarding uh, uh, this word, uh, about any concepts, whether it is Ayurveda or you can ask us. And we will give all the numbers of the respective faculties. Okay, all are very eminent personalities. Yes. So, we hope that uh, uh, Prajit, Prajit, anything you have to say? Hari Karendi, it's okay? Yes, sir. Perfect, sir. Ah, okay. This uh, Yoga Alien certificate, you know, the certification, you will definitely get a certification, don't worry. And uh, probably the 200 uh, RYT. Yeah? So, we'll manage it and we'll issue you. For that, you have to pay a small amount. Because that's all. For registration, you have to pay that. So, in some of the countries, you know, in UK and USA, they are asking it. Only some of the universities. And other countries, they ask an academic degrees. Okay, and here the uh, this one uh, in uh, our Ayush, they are conducting many this one yoga teachers level one, level two, level three. I don't know why they are conducting all these courses. I don't know. Okay, when a person has a high good academic degree from a university, I don't know why they are conducting this. But Yoga Alliance is not like that because it is an international yoga teachers association, so they have some grip up on that. He says Sandeep Shodhavan, sir. He knows about it. Yoga Islands. And some of the country ask the certificate, I think. Is it? And our Sandeep Shodhavan, sir, he is a very good yoga therapist. He, he has been in Russia for many years. Okay, I think that just he came in India. Okay, due to war, I have to return back. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, I was more into agriculture so when you called me. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So, I, I, I'm talking about you. Uh, okay. You had been so in Russia many it's times. It's like uh, when, you, when you take the whole world, the, Russia has an Eastern uh, alien. I mean, they, they have an Asian culture also. So, in Southern Russia and all, they, the herbs are also grown. So that's the reason we go there and the pharmaceutical lobby, the Western yeah. pharmaceutical lobby is not that powerful. So that anything Ayurveda, anything herbal is subtle. So they recognize, I mean, semi-recognize. I have to work under another. So, so Thank you. Chinese medicine and Indian medicine are accepted. Mm -hmm. And of course, yoga is more popular, much, much popular. Even during so the communist... So the permission of... Oh. Pardon? Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 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 So, with the permission of all the great participants who participate and listen to this webinar carefully, and uh, from the faculties, our resource persons, so we are going to conclude this program today. So, I cordially invite uh, our coordinator, Vidya P. Naya, to deliver the vote of thanks address. On behalf of Yoga Enlightens, I express my deep gratitude to Dr. Padmanabhan sir for the decision taken to reach the theoretical and practical concepts of integral yoga therapy to the public across the world. Dr. Agustin George, head of the Department of Physical Education, Government Medical College, Kotem, Kerala, India, for teaching us the correct positioning of the body and movement of the muscles for doing asanas with the principles of biomechanics and kinesiology. 
We are all very much impressed with the scientific speech of Dr. Anida Mohan, clinical nutritionist and diet consultant and former state nutrition officer of Health De Department, Government of Kerala on th uh, therapeutic nutrition to keep our body healthy. We express our sincere gratitude for her meaningful and informative talk on nutrition. Above all, we are sincerely gra grateful to the participants who joined and listened the webinar. I also express my gratitude to Krishna once for delivering the welcome speech. Once again, Yoga Enlightens extends our gratitude to all the participants. Thank you. Om Sarve Bhavandu Sukhinaha Sarve Sandu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Paschandu Ma Kaschid Dukh Bhag Bhavet Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jodargamaya Mrityoma Amrudam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Hi Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. okay.